from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I started as a salesman. I sold sewing machines and automobile parts, hairbrushes, and electronic equipment. They say I can sell anything. I'd like to try to sell something to you. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are, together again on the radio. It's just starting now on the East Coast, and uh, many of our affiliates are on the West Coast or in the Midwest. So uh, you may or may not be seeing this yet, but Barack Obama has bought a half hour of airtime in prime time. It's going to run tonight on CBS, NBC, and Fox. Now, the uh, if you live in Southern California, as we do, or... Portland. These are places where our show runs live on the West Coast. What's going to happen is um, you will see this show tonight live, not live live, but I mean as it airs, on uh, CBS and NBC at 8. And the uh, the run on Fox will happen whenever the, you know the World Series is still on, did you know that? Whatever time that suspended game is over, Game 5 of the World Series on Fox, that is when they'll run it on the West Coast. On the East Coast, they have delayed tonight's broadcast of the World Series uh, so that Fox can take something along the lines of a million dollars from the uh, campaign of Barack Obama. So it will be running on three networks at once on the East Coast and two of the four networks on the West Coast. And uh, he apparently is going to do 30 minutes of talking to you. My understanding is that his goal is to reach all the undecided voters out there. And so uh, originally their plan, I think, was to do what they call a roadblock. You know what a roadblock is? That's when somebody buys the same half hour on all four networks. So there's no getting away from a program. But ABC has a show they've been uh, hyping called Pushing Daisies. And they did not want to preempt Pushing Daisies for Barack Obama. And then uh, later, I guess, I don't know what happened. They realized they could have made some money there. And right now, the advertising climate is uh, a little light in the television business. So uh, at some point when it was too late, ABC got back to the Obama campaign and said, you know what, all right, we'll take the money. And the Obama campaign said, uh, no, we already, uh, we're already set for the evening. So this uh, broadcast will be tonight on CBS, NBC, and Fox. And uh, here in Los Angeles, for example, it will be on CBS and NBC from 8 to 8.30. Also happens tonight, the Lakers are playing the Clippers. So <laughs> you have to wonder who's going to be watching the Lakers and the Clippers and who's going to be watching Obama. It's new NBA season. Uh, I, for one, am going to TiVo Barack Obama and watch the Lakers, the Clippers. I'll watch Obama later. But I will watch. And that's what I wanted to ask you about in this hour of the program. You know, uh, I, if you're like me, and I know many of you are, you've just about had it. This has been going on now for a couple of years, this uh, presidential campaign. And I think everybody is tired of it. Everybody is sick of it. And uh, yet here's Barack Obama, who uh, just five days before the election, I'm sorry, six days before the election, excuse me, uh, is going to uh, take up 30 minutes of primetime airtime to make his final pitch to you. And I'm wondering if you're going to watch it. Will you watch this program, or are you annoyed by the fact that Barack Obama is going to preempt a half hour of prime time? To do a political message to you. I will watch it. But in the world of DVRs, in the world of TiVo, 
you do that all the time. You tape shows, you watch them later, and that's what I do. I record shows, and maybe I'll watch it later tonight. Well, because I do a radio show, I will watch it later tonight. I'll watch, I'll watch it after the Laker game. I've checked out of the World Series, as I've told you. I'm done. But Lakers Clippers, I'm in. So I'll watch Barack Obama tonight. Even though I'm sick of it, I can't even tell you why. Somehow I'm wondering if in 30 minutes he will flesh a few things out because we've really only seen Barack Obama in debates under the rules of the debates. And we've seen him on sound bites. We've seen him on his website. But we've never seen him sit there and talk for 30 minutes. And I, I'm hoping this is not one of those overly produced things where they've got music and the story of his life going back to the beginning and all that nonsense. I just want to hear the guy talk. That's what I want to hear. If it's some slick, overly packaged thing, I have no interest. But I'm wondering if you are going to watch it. It's 30 minutes of prime time tonight. Barack Obama, will you watch it or are you pissed off about this show? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. I am an East Coast feed and I am peeking at the Barack Obama infomercial. And he speaks for about the first six or seven minutes and then it goes to footage of people talking about what a great guy he is and all the great plans he's got. That's what I'm seeing. But I will watch it. I will take a look. 1-800-5800-TOM. Barack Obama's going to preempt 30 minutes of prime time tonight on three of the four networks. Will you watch Mario on the Tom Likas yeah, show? Good, Tom. good. Yeah, I, I will be watching it. I'm quite interested. Like I was telling the screener, uh, this is, I'm 29 years old, and this is the first time I, I have registered to vote and that I will be voting in a presidential election. And you know, I want to see what, what he wants to talk about and what he has to say. I mean, he's had people's attention since the... As you start it, so why not give them a half hour? All right, so you will make time to watch this show tonight. Well, yeah, I'm actually on the 405 right now trying to get there. Hopefully I make it in time. <laughs> <laughs> You've got about uh, about uh, almost three hours, so uh, good luck. Yeah, but it's the 405. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mario, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Will you watch Barack Obama tonight, or are you pissed off that he's preempting a half hour of prime time on three of the four networks? Tom, hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yeah, I will not be watching this presidential uh, uh, infomercial tonight. Tell us why. Well, because there's nothing he can say now that can change my mind on anything. Well, that's why I said earlier, I, what I have read is that this is aimed at trying to change the minds of undecideds. Yeah, I think, I, Tom, I think that everybody's decided two years ago who they were going to vote for. Well, that would be impossible since two years ago we didn't know who the nominees would be. No, but we did have an, we did have an idea that Barack Obama was going to There's a lot of people there. out there who are hoping to vote for Mike Huckabee next week, but guess what? Mike won't <laughs> be on the ballot. Exactly, but there's nothing he can do to change anybody's undecided mind. I think everybody's got their mind made up by now. Well, uh, I, I would believe that, but they got a lot of money over there at the Obama campaign, and so this is how they're going to spend it, to, to just get one last message in there. Yes, you're right, Tom. Can you blow me up, please? Yes, yes, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. Will you watch Barack Obama tonight? Jenny, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I will be watching it tonight. Um, I'm an independent voter, but I've already made my decision. But I do want to have one last look at him. Uh, with, a, what, with a power tool in your hand or what? No, not with a power tool. I just, there's a part of me that wishes that his policies were different, that that maybe he would, I don't trust him, I guess that's the thing. You don't um, trust him, so you're not voting for him? I don't, well, I don't like his policies, that's why I'm not voting which, for him. Which, uh, time for another edition of Chicks on Politics, well, what policies are we talking about? I don't like his tax policy, and I don't like his 
health care policy. Do you, do you make over a quarter million dollars a year? I do not. And you're concerned that he's going to raise taxes on people who make over a quarter million dollars a year? I'm not so much concerned about that. I think that any president, probably in this economic crisis that we're in, that they will raise taxes. I don't know if McCain will. He says he won't. But Obama has changed his mind three times. About what? About the $250,000 tax for small businesses. I haven't seen that. Fifty, and then it went to two hundred, and then it went to one hundred and fifty. And so I, I don't know which either. one he's going to stick with. I see. So, are you voting for McCain? I am voting for McCain. Mm -hmm. And Sarah Palin. Uh, you know what? I don't agree with a lot of things that Palin believes in, but I'm not worried about Roe v. Wade being overturned. I think that's the biggest disagreement I have with her. Other than that, not much. I don't think she's going to be really doing much if she was vice president. You don't think she's a complete dope? Uh, no, I don't think she's a complete dope. Really? No. You think no. she's an educated and articulate individual? I don't think she's as educated as Obama is. Uh, but uh, I don't think she's you know, as educated I, I, I as I am. I do want to hear what he has to say on his policies one more time. So you're still open-minded. I'm hoping, you know, I really rooted for him, but his policies just, I don't like them. I don't think they're, uh, they're what America is about. What policies are those? Well, <laughs> redistributing money like that to 40% of the people that don't even pay federal income taxes... And they get a check. Why? Why should I have somebody give somebody my money? Well, first of all, I, I don't think it's true that forty percent of the American people don't pay income taxes. I just don't think that's true. I do. Where do you get your number from? Factchecker. Factchecker. dot com. Factchecker. dot com. Uh huh. We're gonna get on that right now. Few other ones. Factchecker.com, Gary. Uh, this caller says that 40% of the American people don't pay taxes. Let's federal find out. Federal income taxes. Federal income. Let's find out if that's true. And they'll get, like, they have a graph. Like, I'll get, like, 400 bucks back from McCain under his tax plan. Under, under Obama's, I'll get 1000 It's really not that big, much of a difference. It's just that I don't think that we need to give our money away and have somebody else decide where it's going to go. Well, again, I don't think that the money is going, if you've been paying any attention and doing any reading. Uh, we, the money is not going from rich people like me into the pockets of lazy, ignorant people. Uh, yeah, the money, the going, money, the Bob? money, the, well, first of all, some is, of the money, some is, of the money. His health care plan? You want the government to be in control of our health No, care? I don't agree with that at all. But I do believe we need jobs training. I do believe we need to repair infrastructure in this country. I do believe we need to do something about the environment and energy independence. I do. McCain wants to do it all. No, no. McCain, McCain well, wants to do all the energy, yeah, I, everything. I, no, no but, but again, what McCain wants to do is simply drill in the United States. That's the big thing. This drill, he also wants to do nuclear. I know. So, uh, yeah, but, clean but, coal. Uh, we're talking about what you're going to run cars on. What are you going to run cars on? Well, if you listen to Pickens, you can actually have your car converted into clean coal. Uh, no, he says you can have your car converted to natural gas, and that's what he suggests. I just watched Boone Pickens on TV last week. Well, okay, clean gas. You can have it. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. Your car's not going to run on clean coal. And there was no such thing as clean coal, by the way. Jumbo shrimp and clean coal. Disabuse yourself of both of those. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Will you watch Barack Obama tonight? He's preempting a half hour of prime time on three of the four networks. Kevin, hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. I don't agree with everything you say, but I cannot agree with you anymore about Obama. What do you mean? Well. He's, uh, think he's, uh, right I, well, then, first of all, the question was not whether you agree with me about Obama. The question is whether you will watch him or not. Yes, I will. I you will watch him. I'm watching him tonight, and I'm really excited about it. I'm just 
really happy that he's going to see him speaking. You know, whenever I watch TV and see him speaking, you know, just something about this man just struck me to him. I'm really excited about him. And so uh, you'll be voting for him next week? Uh, actually, I already did. Oh, you did? So did I. I already did. And uh, just one comment about the... Gary was talking right now about the taxes. Like, my family, they own a business, and we make more than a quarter million dollars, and we're still voting for Obama. Because we know... When he gives all those free bits back to, to the middle class people, you're all going to go out and spend this money. Are we going to benefit out of this? Well, I, I happen to agree with you. I, I'm in a business where we, uh, we advertise products. And I need my listeners to be able to afford to buy the products we sell. Exactly. Like more money for them, more money they're going to spend, more money we're going to make. Thank you for that, Kevin. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Barack Obama tonight on three of the four networks is uh, buying a half hour for an infomercial to make a final presentation to you. Will you watch or not? Maybe you're pissed off about it. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Mr. Likas. How yes, are you? doing okay. Great, great. Um, politics aside, I absolutely will not be watching. I mean, I've, I've watched every single thing that's, uh, that's come along so far. I've watched many of the commercials. I've watched, obviously, the presidential candidates going back and forth. And I'm disappointed in both of them. And the, the, you know, it's just kind of the same spiel over and over again. What I'm further disappointed with is even though Obama is outspending McCain, I don't know, you know, the ratio, but uh, according to sources and, and what the media is saying, it's uh, it's unprecedented. It just seems like this is yet another, I mean, it just seems like the money should go to something far better. He talks about uh, putting money towards uh, better things, and um, certainly he can spend the money on other things other than just merely outspending McCain to try and nail this vote. If he hasn't nailed it thus far, Spending this this incredible amount of money just seems like uh, like an enormous waste of money. And well, I, keep I mean, in mind he has a war chest of money that's been donated to his political campaign, and this is exactly the kind of thing that money is for. Well, yeah, that, that's that's true. And then when he has the uh, the budget in place uh, that uh, Congress is going to give him, he'll have a war chest of money that he's going to spend on numerous other things. So. It just seems but like do you even know what it is he, he proposes to spend money on? Do you know what it is? Well, I know that uh, he talks kind of uh, the whole exacto blade thing. Well, well we're going to you know fine tune, and we're not just going to cut everything off, and we're going to have to define and refine and 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 adjust. And I mean, it just uh, really, quite honestly, I I don't know that the message has been clear. I I really haven't gotten a straight message from him. Well, I, maybe I that's what this infomercial will answer for you. Uh, I would have thought that it would have answered it uh, along the way. Well, so you know, he's really never had 30 minutes to sit and talk about himself and talk about what he wants to do. Uh, he has always been chopped and diced and spliced. He has been in debate formats. Uh, he has been interrupted. Uh, he has been told his time was up. So maybe 30 minutes of unexpurgated airtime would be the way to find out uh, the answers to your questions. Yeah, but then what about, uh, I mean, it's it's no different than what, uh, again, politics aside, but it's no different than, uh, you know, the, the same opportunity that McCain has had. Uh, really, in fact, I, I think that McCain is, has not had a fair shake in the media. Uh, How but, so? Well, um, I, I'm really not seeing, personally, uh, and again, this is just an opinion, I, I'm really not seeing that uh, McCain is getting a fair shake. How? Well, I'm, I'm not seeing the same amount of airtime being presented to McCain. I don't think that uh, that they're treating McCain and uh, and uh, uh, Sarah Palin. Well, with... I read a I read a survey uh, about this that was done by a uh, an organization that uh, checks on the fairness of journalism. And um, here's what they said: McCain gets just as much time as Obama. Uh, right now, it's more negative. Uh, the coverage is more negative. But when they investigated further, they found out that the majority of negative stories about McCain are stories about the polls saying that McCain's behind in the polls, which he is. 
Well, maybe so, but I, I think it goes further than that. And I, I don't mean in, in, uh, in actual coverage and actual airtime. I'm talking about, uh, you know, like uh, the L.A. Times or the New York Times or, or you know, the, this liberal paper or that. And by, again, the way, who's even re- by the way, who's even reading newspapers anymore? Well, no, I, I do agree, but then they're covered further in the, uh, I mean, you know, they always <laughs> they always seem to be followed I mean, you now by, have the Internet. By, you, you can read as much as you want about anybody or anything you want. If you want to sit all day in front of your computer and read about John McCain, if you want to sit all day and read blogs that are favorable to McCain, you can do that. You're not a a slave to a newspaper or a television station. No, I I agree. I just... uh, All of this is irrelevant. This is all, you know, this this is all Spiro Agnew nonsense from the 60s. None of this stuff is relevant anymore. Well, that that may be the case. And again, this is uh, just in my opinion. Sometimes uh, it seems a little offensive when... Uh, you know, when you expect certain certain things to, uh, you know, I mean, if I walked up to uh, uh, to somebody on the street or if I walked up to Obama and said, hey, so, like, uh, did you ever beat that uh, child molestation charge you're on? He could probably hold me liable. I, I might even be able to, he might even be able to sue me. Uh, what? For slander. But, uh, but the papers can say just about anything about anything. But who, again, who's reading them? Well. Do you see uh, today the Christian Science Monitor? Is, is not going to have a print edition anymore? It's just going to stop printing. No one is reading papers. The, the circulation on papers is dropping like a stone. And uh, that's probably a good thing. But the point is that that now uh, people are getting their news more and more from the Internet. And, and there's more information and disinformation about candidates on the Internet th- th- than there's ever been before. Yeah, if you, if you want more information about John McCain, you can sit in front of your computer and read about John McCain from morning till night. No, I know. And then you can read probably, positive things about him from morning till night. And, and that and, if that's and, what you want. It's there. But I'm not interested in that, really. I mean, and, and much of that information, as you said, is disinformation. There's just as much skewed information and made up information, good, bad, or indifferent, about both candidates that you really don't. You really no longer have a a uh, a. a, a, a a supply or a uh, source, a really truthful source about really what's going on. It just seems like everything... Well, most conservatives don't believe there was ever a good, uh, trustworthy source. (laughs) So on the Internet, it's perfect for people like that. Go uh, read uh, what people who agree with you, uh, you can all uh, chat with each other about how you all agree with each other. Well... Uh, again, I, I don't know that I'm in agreement or disagreement with uh, any particular... I mean, when's the last time you watched an evening newscast? Honestly. I, I, I watch it every morning and every night. I, really? I watch, You're I watch... one of the few. I'm sorry? You are one of the few. Oh, uh, well, maybe so. I mean, uh... Do you know how many people watch Katie Kirk? Less than 6 million people in the whole country. Yeah. There's 300 million people. 6 million of them watch that. Yeah, it's, it's a shame, actually. Well, but the point is, that's 2% of the population. Yeah. Two percent. Yeah, that's probably true when you start talking about the figures like that. Well, think about ninety-eight percent of the American people did not watch Katie Gray. If you think that newscast for some reason is skewed, just to take it as an example, just think ninety-eight percent of the American people don't watch. I, I just don't understand. I mean, I heard Kevin or whoever it was earlier, and he said he's just absolutely just. I mean, it, he sounded enthralled with the man from from. I mean, he's definitely an excellent speaker. He's he's definitely very well educated and. And very motivational, but I really haven't heard any, I mean... But the, again, if the guy's going to sit there for 30 minutes, don't you think that would be a way to hear it from his own point of view? You might disagree with it after you hear it. I, I just don't think I'm going to go there. I've been disappointed in, in uh, and even all the commercials that he's run. He's run hundreds of commercials. Well, and uh, all I, the same I don't, I don't think commercials, I don't really don't think commercials are the way to get a message out, but that, that, you know, we have a system where people are forced to do that. Anyway, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Thanks for taking my call, Tom. Yes. Um, I will be watching uh, Barack tonight, not so much that I'm undecided. I, I was up until a couple of weeks ago. However, thanks to your tutelage, I'm uh, definitely voting for Mr. Obama. Um, <clears throat> not only from your tutelage, but watching the brain-dead uh, <laughs> Republican vice president candidate, Ms. Palin, yeah. her level of idiocy you know, on the uh, not only the Katie Couric interview, as you mentioned, but countless other interviews that I found online. Yeah. The fact that this nation could even 
conceive of having this lady not only in the vice presidential role, but, you know, heaven forbid something happened to McCain. Can you imagine this lady sitting down with heads of state for, for truly important issues? It's fright- it really is frightening how close this country has become to putting this lady potentially in the most powerful position in the whole world. It's mind-boggling. Yes. And, by the way, brought to you by the party that brought you Senator Ted Stevens. Hmm? <laughs> how about that slime bag? Yes, in- indeed. Who, by the way, was one of the morons who tried to regulate what we can say on the radio. Hmm? And now we find out what kind of a corrupt, sleazy individual he is. Indeed. Now a convicted felon. <laughs> a big gas bag. He can't vote douche now. bag. Won't be voting. Amazing. Just a big jerk off. Sure. I, I think any any Barack exposure, uh, you know, especially it being, you know, through the national media on the TV in particular, I think any exposure to him to potentially sway people that would otherwise be voting for McCain and, and as we said, the aforementioned knucklehead Palin is good exposure. Mike, thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, you bet it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Barack Obama infomercial, I just got a sneak peek at it from the East Coast feed. And the last few minutes were done live from some venue somewhere in Florida with a crowd. And he was getting the crowd all hyped up. I just saw it. Uh, Barack Obama is going to uh, is going to take up half an hour of airtime tonight on CBS, uh, NBC, and uh, on the West Coast after the World Series game on Fox for an infomercial to make a final push, a final pitch to you. Will you watch it, or does it piss you off? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Bobby on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. You know, Tom, I'm not going to watch it because simply just what one of your earlier callers said. I think, ironically, what what will eventually go down in, his, is in history as, as making this man win the, the election is, is Sarah Palin, simply put. The, the, the thought of her ever becoming president is just so, just so mind-numbing that you say, you know what, I don't care what Barack has to say. Get him in office. That's fine. As long as she's not the president. I think we're in a kind of lose-lose situation between McCain and Barack. You know, I mean, to break it down. But, however, I just think in this situation, there's no way that I would like Sarah Palin to become president. God forbid one day she becomes president. Uh, I, I, do well, think, well, I do think that was the end of uh, McCain being competitive with Obama, uh, was appointing Sarah Palin as his running mate. Uh, that, I think, was the... He thought it was uh, going to be this uh, this really great trick. Uh, hey, uh, Hillary Clinton didn't get the nomination. Uh, we got a chick of our own. And think, uh, once everyone realized uh, what a dizzy broad she was, that was the end right there. Irony is just amazing. That irony is it's, it's amazing. But that'll go down in history. That'll be amazing. But yeah, uh, for me, I will not be watching. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate you. the call. Madison on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Madison. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Okay. Well, yes, I will be watching uh, BTV tonight. I'm so excited. I got my BTV. Obama BTV. And um, I have my Barack Obama shirt on. I got it in the mail yesterday. I'm wearing really? it right now. And what, what are you wearing underneath that? Oh, nothing. Just a shirt. There we go. I figured as much. And I'm super excited. And another thing I'm super excited about is that I really think that we are going to... It would be awesome is if we could um, win in Arizona, because that's where I'm calling from. And I would love to take John McCain down in his own home state. And that's... I think it could happen. I really do. You be that, awesome. Do you really think so? No, I have not heard that Barack Obama had much of a shot in Arizona. And Arizona, by the way, uh, is not what most people outside of Arizona think. I lived in Arizona for three years. Uh, you've got a Democratic governor. And, right. you, and you've got many Democratic uh, politicians in office. Well, it, I mean, from my experience, it seems like there's a lot of 
there are a lot of Republicans. It's kind of frustrating, but um, I've heard that it's pretty close. And if anything, we're definitely going to make him feel uncomfortable when he loses and he has to come back running here with his tail between his legs. So I'm super excited for that, even if he doesn't win this state. I hope it comes pretty close. And I'm super excited that Obama's going to be president and that I'm just excited to, you know, be proud of my country again, be proud of my president, and just feel like we're respected in the world. And I'm just super excited, and I can't wait to see Obama because he's super hot, and I'll look at him anytime. Are you going to have power tools tonight when you're watching? Oh, I don't know. Don't, oh, that bad idea. Good get, idea, maybe. He gets know. in front of a crowd tonight. He gets them all hyped up. <laughs> there you go. You got your Barack shirt on and nothing else. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> You st know. Still got time to uh, get out to the drugstore, pick up some batteries. Well, I might. I'll look into that, Tom. Good idea. There you go. <laughs> I'm here to hook you up, Madison. Well, thank you, Tom. I love you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. It's Cameron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First line, long time. Yes. Uh, I definitely will not be watching the Obama commercial. Why not? Um. I definitely got to watch the Laker game. Big fan of the Lakers. Well, you realize uh, you can watch both in, if you live in the L.A. area because uh, uh, Fox will run it uh, in L.A. after the World Series game tonight. So it'll probably run tonight sometime between 11 and midnight. You can watch it. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, so, I'm, I'll definitely be voting for McCain anyways. Really? Yes. Why? Um... Uh, I'm more, I'm more into the gun scene, and Obama really isn't into the guns. So you you want a president who's into guns? Yes. That that's it. Uh, no, not that's not it. Did well, you know Obama say he's going to take away your guns? Did he? All right, I see you know nothing about what you're talking about there. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jonathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing okay. Yeah, calling in on the subject that you're speaking of, and I'm a third generation Laker fan and diehard, but I will be watching that thirty minute spot that uh, Obama is uh, running. Wow, against Lakers and Clippers. Now that is loyalty. Yeah, well, you know, of course, it's the Lakers against the Clippers. I mean, this. <laughs> you know, it's kind of an understatement. Yeah, we we know he's going to win that game. Oh, definitely. I, even though I still want to see, you know, Kobe do a couple of nice dunks and, you know, three pointers by Sasha and all that. But I'm, I'm going to take out the 30 minutes to watch that. And well, uh, Barack will not interfere with the fourth quarter, which is really when Kobe comes alive anyway. <laughs> I've got it all figured out, by the way. I've got it all figured out. And uh, it's, it's something that's disturbing. I talked to a friend of mine, a senior of mine, and uh, he's a Republican. And no matter what, he still is voting for McCain. And that just kind of put a, a daunting thought in my mind that no matter what, people just don't see what we need and what we don't need, no matter what your own personal beliefs are. It's, 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 it's scary, to be honest with you. I'm just amazed that anybody would be satisfied with what we've got now. Yeah. Because if you vote for McCain, you're pretty much saying, okay, let's just continue with what we got. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever saw this movie called Idiocracy to where, like, entire America goes dumb. Well, if we stay on the path we're at, that's where we're going to be. I, I thought we were already there. Well, hope, you know, I try to stay optimistic, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I understand, but sometimes it's really difficult to keep the faith. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Barack Obama is taking 30 minutes out of prime time tonight. He's bought it on CBS, NBC, and Fox. Uh, to uh, make one final pitch to you, one final presentation. Will you watch it or not? Are you angry about it? You tell me. Mona on the Tom Liger Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mona. First time caller, long time listener. Are you a Mona or a screamer? <laughs> Mona. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I would definitely watch him tonight. Really? Yes. 
Tell us why. Because he's extremely intelligent. I would say we need a president like that in this country and this world. We need somebody that is much, much more intelligent than a lot of us. Well, I think you're right. I think, I, but put it this way, I just need someone who's more intelligent than me. Absolutely. Then I would say more than a lot of us. We need that. Right. And I didn't come to this conclusion just by uh, not studying about the both actually candidate. You know, I, uh, I uh, watch both of them for a uh, past couple of months, and uh, I decided Obama is the right person for the job. So, and, uh, so if you've uh, already I, decided, do you need to watch the infomercial? I think, yes, I would like to watch it, yes. I think for a lot of people that they are so set in their way and they are for McCain, I would recommend that they watch Obama as well and then see, really, be open-minded about it. Well, um, uh, that's my plan. Of course, I've already voted, but uh, that's my plan. I plan to watch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Albert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. I'm not going to watch it tonight, Father. Tell us why. <laughs> I'll be at the Laker game live uh, front rows next to Jack Nicholson, Dad. No, you won't. I'm just kidding, Dad. <laughs> uh, but I'll definitely be at the game. I wish I'd be sitting next to Jack, man. I'm And I'm telling you. But, I mean, everything looks so good about a Barack. He still got my vote. But uh, my girlfriend's going to be watching it for me. She's going to be watching it for you and then giving you a complete report? Uh, she better because she knows what's going to happen tonight if I, if I don't get any good reports about it. Who are you voting for? I'm voting for Mr. Obama, Tom. You see? Oh, definitely. I've been listening to you for a long time, especially listening to you almost every day after work, hearing about Barack this, how smart he is. I believe that because I even read a little bit about it. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I have never read the whole thing, but I'm trying to definitely read more about it, you know, so I know to tell everybody on what's going on. And we need a smart president. We don't need no brain dead or especially no cleavage like Palin who's making a mockery because of her glasses or whatever it is that's being marketed and everybody just imitates that. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Jerry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jerry. Well, I just wanted to call and say that uh, I am not watching tonight. I uh, I have already voted for uh, John McCain. Uh, here in uh, Texas, we have the early voting. Yeah. And uh wanted to uh, just, you know, someone in your position that obviously uh, probably makes more than $250,000 a year. I, I make $250,000 a year before the end of January. Fall into the category that, that uh, Barack Obama is speaking about, uh, being the people that taxes are raised. And do you have a problem with being in that group? I don't. And the reason I don't have a problem with it is because I was in that group when Bill Clinton raised taxes. And uh, when all was said and done, I was wealthier at the end of Clinton's time than I am today after eight years of George W. Bush. It's that simple. Because there's other ways to tax. And one of the ways we have been taxed heavily has been the weakening of the dollar. And if you don't see the weakening of the dollar as the tax that it is, well, then <laughs> you'll get what you paid or didn't pay for. Uh, the, the fact is that the economy's been lousy. The dollar's been weak. When the dollar is weak, we all suffer. And, and by the way, the main way we all suffer, the one that everybody can relate to, is when the dollar is weak, the cost of gasoline is at its highest. And that is the primary reason the price of gasoline, the price of a barrel of oil has been so high, because the dollar has been so weak on the world markets. Well, now that the price of gasoline has dropped and the per, per it still has, it has, it has, it has not been, dropped to what it was eight years ago or even four years ago. Correct. Even though that the price per gallon is as low as it was, the price we're paying at the pump still isn't as low, which I don't understand. But. Well, because the dollar is worth less, and that's one of the ways you've been taxed. Sure, they reduced uh, what they call income taxes, and I'm doing the little air quotes there. Uh, they're sure they've reduced uh, the income tax for people in the upper tax bracket, uh, but what they, have, uh, of course, don't tell you is how much of a tax you're paying at the pump every time you go. Not just the taxes that are contained in a gallon of gasoline, but the cost of buying gasoline, the cost of the gas gasoline itself. Uh, that is higher because the dollar is weak. To me, that's a tax. One other question. Being a veteran myself 
and having a general concern for the the well being of our country against uh, attacks from you know lunatics. Um, I, I'm wondering what your view is on the fact that I just have a feeling that within the first year or so of office with Barack Obama, somebody is going to test him. Well, uh, Joe Biden already said that. That is entirely possible. Uh, by the way, George Bush was tested. Anybody remember 9-11? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, and the, it's not that it was... And that, test, by, that, that was, by the way, that was the first year he was in office. Right, but that was not the first terrorist attack by this group or, or individual. No, uh, and, know, and, the, and the previous attack was, if I recall correctly, around the first year after uh, Bill Clinton was elected. I don't remember what year that was. 1993, but, uh, when the World Trade Center was attacked the first time. Do you feel that Barack Obama has the intestinal fortitude to do what it takes to protect our country? I do, and, and part of the reason I believe that is because he's been openly talking about our need to go into Afghanistan. It, but if you listen to what he says about going to Afghanistan and, and negotiating with the Pakistanis, it, you no, know, no, and, he, and, and that's not what... has a very good point about... He wants to talk to these people with no precondition. And he keeps beating this point into the ground, but it's a very good point. You can't meet with lunatics without precondition. Well, again, uh, the way they've been doing it has not been working. Where is Osama bin Laden, by the way? No idea. Well, you, well your president, who's one of your neighbors, has had eight years to find him. I, I understand. And, and, and so, I so the, 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 the way we're doing it isn't working. Rick, I don't know if you watched 60 Minutes, but if you saw the 60 Minutes episode the week before last, when they had the the, uh, the gentleman that was part of the team that was hunting Osama bin Laden, um, they had their chance, and, and they couldn't make it happen. And it wasn't because... the anyone stopped them it was just because it was logistically impossible to make it happen they had a fix on them and they and they and unfortunately the time passed and they missed their well, opportunity the fact, fact is the people in there right now have failed at bringing osama bin laden to justice i don't care about saddam hussein i care about the guy behind 9-11 osama bin laden and obama believes that Afghanistan is the likely way to find him the tom like show